In this module, we're going to discuss all the different types of sweet oranges. Now, these aren't quite as popular as Satsumas, but they're still very easy to grow in certain parts of Louisiana. And as you'll see, some very cool things can be grown from this category of sweet fruit. Something interesting, we just want to spend a little time here. The orange fruit does not get its name from the color. It actually comes from a Sanskrit word, naranga, which means fragrant. So the name orange doesn't refer to the color, it refers to the smell of the fruit. And actually the color orange didn't exist until that happened. Fun fact, there's actually some articles online that we can link to uh, that describe that in some more detail. The color word orange came from the color of the ripe fruit, which used to be described simply as yellow-red. Now remember your primary colors in grade school, what happens when you mix yellow paint with red paint? You get orange. Well, back in the day, there was no word for that, and it was just called yellow-red. Fun little factoid if you ever have this come up in a trivia match. <laughs> so there's three different kinds of oranges, and we're gonna kind of walk you through them and then discuss the individual cultivars. First up, we have the bitter or sour orange. These are usually not eaten fresh because of their taste. Uh, they're very astringent, uh, not very good eating unless you mix a lot of sugar with them. Uh, the flesh is tart to bitter, and it's actually from the acidic juices within the fruit itself, and it's due to the essential oils of the rind. Now, anyone that's kind of um, cooked a lot knows to zest oranges or lemons or limes for certain recipes and you know about those essential oils held in the rind um, under that outer layer of skin. So that's where some of the bitterness is coming from. The best known bitter oranges varieties are Bouquet de Fleurs, Chinoto, and Seville. Now the Seville orange is very popular in the Mediterranean region. That's one that comes up a lot when we're talking about bitter orange. Um, bitter oranges originated in India, of all places, and made their way to the Mediterranean as early as 1000 AD. That was via that Silk Road trading route. They were trading all kinds of seeds and plants um, along with precious metals, rubies, spices, silk. Um, so plants have been moving a long time and Europe has been growing these bitter oranges for many centuries. Today, bitter oranges are mainly grown in Europe. Um, they never really caught on here in the New World in America. Um, so that's where you're primarily gonna see the classic bitter orange varieties. Next up, we have the mandarin oranges. And remember, we've covered a little bit about this in previous slideshows with the satsuma, the mandarin, tangerine, and tangelo. They're kind of all under that mandarin umbrella. Uh, they're thought to have originated in southeastern China. We don't know that for sure, but that's the working theory. And they spread throughout Asia in the 10th century and to Europe in the early 1800s. Now, we do know that the Satsuma made its way via Japan with the priests into the New Orleans area about 100 years earlier than that in the 1700s. Um, they are grown today mainly in Brazil, the United States, Italy, Japan, and Spain. That's where they are the most popular. Um, however, you can grow them in many places. And they're loose-skinned fruits, so that rind is not holding on very tightly. Uh, they're so loose that they're sometimes called zipper rind. You can peel them really easily with just your fingers. And uh, that's part of why they're so popular. If you remember the cuties or anything you get at the grocery store that's packaged um, kind of fun for kids, it's usually a mandarin of some kind. Mandarin oranges are generally smaller and flat in shape as well, um, almost like someone took a ball and squished it. And they're typically a little sweeter than oranges. So we've already covered most of those, uh, but this is just a refresher. Next up, the sweet orange. It's believed to have originated in southern China, and it came to that Mediterranean citrus growing region several hundred years after the bitter orange. So the bitter orange was already well established in those areas before the sweet orange became popular. Um, it's grown in Brazil a lot and the United States and Mexico. And the major growers of the sweet orange are typically in those warmer climate ranges. Um, if we think about where a lot of the sweet orange productive um, areas in the US are, it's in Florida and California, so the coastal areas. Sweet oranges have a sweet flavor. It's a blend of sugar and acid, so it's nicely balanced. Um, it's not bitter and astringent like the bitter orange varieties. And they are round or oval in shape, most of them. 
Sweet oranges can be further divided into three primary groups, and let's dig into those. First up, we have the navel oranges. They're a sweet orange that develops something kind of interesting. It's actually a smaller second fruit within the larger fruit at the blossom end of the orange. That's the navel. It looks almost like a belly button. That's where the name comes from, and when you slice them in a cross section, you can see that smaller fruit structure there at the base of the, of the, uh, the fruit itself. Uh, blood oranges are our second type, and here we have a blood orange. It's kind of that crystal red color, and it's similar in appearance on the outside to any of the other sweet oranges and common oranges, um, but the flesh and the peels can range with a, a pink to a red coloration into like a deep red purple color. And we're gonna dig more into what that's from um, in subsequent slides. The juice of the blood orange is red, so when you juice it, it maintains that red coloration that makes it very special um, among the sweet oranges. And they have a rich kind of berry-like flavor. So not quite as acidic or um, sweet sour balance, but really more of a fruity overtone uh, to that juice and to the fruit itself when you consume it. Common oranges, our basic orange down here, are the largest group of sweet oranges. Um, any sweet orange that's not navel or a blood orange is gonna be a common orange. Uh, they're typically sold as a fresh fruit, eating fruit, and uh, almost all orange juice is gonna come from this guy. Now we're gonna dig into the cultivars. The Washington Naval um, was imported in 1870 to the U.S. and it's one of the one of the original trees with that original shipment of these is still producing fruit in Riverside, California. That's an old tree and that's pretty amazing that trees with adequate care and monitoring can live that long and be productive that long. That's fabulous. The flowers do lack viable pollen, so the fruit is naturally seedless. And here we've got a good picture of what the blossoms look like, and you see there's no yellow pollen showing compared to some of our other citrus. It's a large fruit, three to four and a half inches in diameter, and the harvest window is typically from November through January with these. And the fruit does hold very well on the tree, so if you like the idea of just walking out into your yard periodically throughout the citrus producing season and plucking an orange off the tree, Washington Naval is a good choice. Next up, we've got the Caracara Red Naval, and it's got this beautiful red color to it, but it is not a blood orange, and we're gonna unpack that. It's large and seedless, and it stores well on the tree. The red color comes from a compound called lycopene, beta carotene, and cryptoxanthin. Um, so th that's where that pigmentation comes from, and it happens naturally, so it's naturally that color. It's believed to be a cross between a Washington na navel and a Brazilian Baha'i navel. So it's something that they discovered um, that had kind of happened on its own. The harvest window is November through January, and the fruit does hold well on the tree. This is one that I wish we'd see more in Louisiana. It's a nice fruit, it tastes really good, and that coloration is very special. Next up, one that's a little more uncommon is the Dream Navel. The Dream Navel was discovered in Orlando, Florida in the 40s, and it's another one that just sort of popped up. Uh, the citrus trees hybridized, did their thing, and this was discovered uh, to be a very nice tree. It's a medium-sized fruit with a loose skin, so this is one of the more easily peeled sweet oranges. And it's sweet and less acidic than most navel oranges. Um, again, here's that navel that's showing at the bottom of the fruit. Harvest window from December through January, so it's a little more um, compact harvest window, and the fruit does store well on the tree. This is one that we don't see in production in Louisiana very often, but it does grow here. Next up, the blood orange. Now this one's kind of funky. Blood oranges might have originated near the Mediterranean where they've been growing since the 1700s, uh, Back then there were no photographs, but people were writing about blood oranges and they pop up in a lot of Renaissance paintings, which is pretty cool. The red color on these comes from anthocyanins, which are something that pop up in many plants in response to cold. 
So if you cut open a blood orange and it's still fairly warm weather out and we haven't had any cold days or cold nights, it's gonna look like any other orange. It's not gonna have that ruby red color to it. It takes a lot of cold exposure for that to happen for those compounds to emerge. The fruit is small compared to other orange groups and it only gets that color when the nights are cool. So it needs to sit out in that cold weather, not freezing weather, but the longer it's exposed to cold weather, the more of that red color will emerge. Um, some of our growers, if they harvest too early and you cut that orange in cross section, you'll see the red color just kind of leaking into the orange color, so you know it's not there yet. And if you pick them at that stage, there's actually a trick. You can harvest them in your fridge or an area that stays 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit for a few weeks, and that's gonna make that deep red color come out a little bit more. Um, so that's a neat little hack. Harvest window from December through March. Again, the longer you leave them on, the more of that deep red color they're gonna take up. They are alternate bearing, so they tend to take an off year after they have a bumper crop. The fruit holds well on the tree and it's mostly seedless. This is a nice smaller tree for a small backyard at seven to 10 feet in height. Um, you can get these on a dwarfing rootstock and keep them in a container as well. And it's actually a very popular choice in our area. Next up, the Hamlin Sweet. This is one that we do see kind of often here. Um, it's a medium to a large tree. It produces reliably every year, so it doesn't need a year off for an alternate bearing um, tendency. Small to medium fruit, mostly seedless. As you can see in this cross section, you've got a couple of barely developed seeds and a couple that have fully developed um, pretty easy to eat around them. You harvest them in December through February, so it does trail into the spring months a little. And it's one of the more widely grown early orange varieties. Um, it's just a good overall sweet orange to look into if you're interested in these cultivars. This one's a little less common, the amber sweet, and it gets that name from the coloration. You can see this is sort of a deep brownish orange color when you cut them open in cross section. And it's a hybrid. Um, it's actually what is believed to be a clementine and an Orlando tangelo crossed with a mid-season sweet orange. So that's a mouthful, um, but that's how we think this may have happened. It's a medium pear-shaped fruit, so a little more unique in that it's narrower at the top and it widens at the blossom end. It's a unique shaped fruit, harvest December, uh, harvest into December from October, and the fruit is actually very seedy. Um, it's not a really popular one here in Louisiana, but it's a little more unusual, so you might want to look into getting an amber sweet if that's your thing. Valencia. Now, this one's really popular because if you're drinking orange juice, chances are pretty good it's coming from a Valencia. It's a really very vigorous upright tree, so give this some space. It's got a lot of juice, high juice content, and a thin rind. So if you have a juicing machine or an orange squeezer or orange press at your house and you like that fresh squeezed orange juice, check out Valencia. You might want to get a couple of trees for your yard. Um, globally, it is the most popular orange tree planted. Um, these things grow all over the world and it's a very good cultivar. Harvest is a little later than many of our citrus. Look at this. Harvest April through June. So when a lot of our other varieties of citrus have wrapped up for the year, that's when our Valencias are just coming online. They like that warm weather and that's when they really develop their fruit. It prefers a winter temperature in the 35 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit range. So it is somewhat limited in where it can be grown in the state, just to that coastal kind of Southern region. Next up, pineapple. This is one we don't see very often either, but it's pretty funky and I wish we'd see it more. It's a medium-sized pear-shaped fruit. It's very seedy. You harvest it in December through February. It's not very cold hardy, which accounts for why it's so rare in our state, but it has a slight pineapple flavor to it. So it could be really fun uh, with tropical fruit drink kind of blend, and it has that flavor naturally, which is cool. Remember to post all your questions to the discussion board, uh, especially if you have a sweet orange variety that we did not talk about or you want to show off your tree's bumper crop from this year. 